would like to introduce uh, Professor Nico Smith, who is with us today. Uh, professor Nico Smith is a professor in ecology at Northwest University, Potsdam Forum campus in South Africa. And I've known Nico for some time, and I know that his research focuses on biodiversity, taxonomy, ecology of parasitic crustacean, and blood protozoa of marine freshwater fish. Um, he has co authored a large number of papers, I think more than 165 publications. Mm -hmm and also edited two books. I have the, the uh, privilege of being uh, author of a co-author of a chapter in one of those books. Uh, and it was really great to work with Nico. Um, and uh, he also supervised and co-supervised 17 PhD students, 28 MSc students uh, who graduated by now. He has contributed very significantly to management of national and international academic societies as president of Parasitological Society of the Southern Africa, president of South African Society of Aquatic Scientists, and committee member of the International Symposium on Fish Parasites. Uh, recently, he has been the first South African aquatic parasitologist to be rated by the South African National Research Foundation as an internationally acclaimed scientist. And I definitely can confirm that he is <laughs> an internationally acclaimed scientist. And Nico, it's really great to have you here today. Um, I obviously I'm here in Launceston in Tasmania and you are in uh, South Africa and we were supposed to have met in uh, Cairns in Queensland uh, in July mm -hmm. uh, because we we're both going to attend ISFP. It was going to be tense meeting um, and I think you've attended quite a few of those meetings before. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you Barbara and thank you for the very kind introduction. Yeah, I've been fortunate. I've, uh, my first um, ISFP meeting was in 1999, showing a bit of my age. And, uh, and that was as a PhD student. And since then, I've been fortunate to have been able to attend every single subsequent one, the South Africa, and then Italy, and, um, and um, Chile one, and then in wow. last year, the last one that's in, quite, in the Tampa. Yeah. yeah, that's quite amazing, because I attended first meeting and I attended was the one in Italy. And uh, I was invited to give a presentation there. But, but since then, I attended every ISFP because there are such great conferences. Yes, yes. Amazing meetings of fish parasitologists. So we obviously were both in Italy and uh, Chile and Spain. So yes. <laughs> favorite memories of either those conferences or maybe even the pre ones previously did you attend as PhD student or organized? Yes, yeah, so, so my first impression, and I think that was something that uh, I will never forget, was my first um, conference as a PhD student. And, and then at this conference, I had the opportunity to meet uh, Professor PTK Wu. Um, and you know, he sees the book that he edited, the, the fish diseases, was the, that was the Bible for us, definitely in South Africa for fish diseases. And to be able to meet him and have a discussion with him. And what I'll never forget is we sat around, um, or we sat during one of the coffee breaks, and I was able to chat to him. And then he told me, and he said, um, Nico, listen, the most important thing about conferences is the networking. He said uh, that the uh, presentations is really good, but that's a, a medium of meeting people. And uh, the great presentations will be published. So you can read them oh. later on anyway, but the ability to network with people. Um, and I think that is something that I, that I took with me um, throughout my career to date. And, and, and that, is, that is part of, of uh, my ability to, to train students to publish papers is this incredible network throughout the world. Um, and that a lot, a lot of it is is to thank for is this the meeting um, that we had and, and that we hopefully will have soon again and mm. stay in touch with people. So yeah, so for my, that was my first big uh, memory of uh, ISFP. So um, do you have any pictures you would like to share with us or from ISFP? Yeah, yes. yeah. So 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 there's there's two that I um um really would like to share. You can you can see that. <laughs> yeah. I, so, we can see it. I can see yeah. Eva and Linda Bass <laughs> and yes. and Melanie Andrews. Wow. Yeah, yeah. She was Quite first in South Africa. Yeah. Yeah, well, she was in South uh, Africa. Uh -huh. Yeah. So this this um, photo was taken at the Viterbo one in Italy. Uh -huh. um, and and what I what I really um, what what struck me about this photo was that this is the final the evening function. 
and then mm -hmm. Professor, Professor Joe van Us called all the South Africans and also collaborators together mm -hmm. for this mm -hmm. photo. And, um, and for me, what was unique was that you can see there, that's Professor um, Ilan Paperna. Oh, um, yes. And, and basically, he was the person who, uh, I, I can say, basically started off with a lot of um, Af um, fish parasite research in Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and he also wrote the first guide to, to, to fish parasites in Africa. And then um, as a young lecturer, um, Professor Jofen asked did a sabbatical mm -hmm. with him in his lab and mm -hmm. then actually came back to South Africa and started um, fish parasitology in South Africa mm -hmm. with, uh, mm -hmm. with the help of, of Ilan Paperna. Um, and, then, and then he trained the students uh, from there on. So basically everyone in this, in this group and then our collaborators, um, Ansha Davis mm -hmm. from the UK and Ian and Eva from um, mm -hmm. Harvard Akova. Um, yeah. Yes, they all, we're all by descendants, academic descendants from, mm -hmm. from um, um, Ilan Paperna, which started it and then Joe van us. So, and then also for me, it was nice because at this stage I was um, already a, a lecturer and I had my own students. So we could say we, we four generations in the academia. So Ilan Paperna, mm -hmm. Joe van us, myself, um, and then my students. Um, there's a few mm -hmm. of my students. Yeah, yeah. At field and, and yeah. Marika, so on. So yeah, and so I, for me that and, was quite nice. <laughs> and I think Melanie Anders was doing masters at the time because then yes, she yes. Had PhD with me in Australia, and now she's in Norway. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that again show how we mm. we we interact. And I know David Vaughan, um, mm -hmm. who was uh, then in South Africa. He also went to James Cook University and he did a PhD mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. with, with Kate mm -hmm. Hudson. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so that's um, that's how we move around. <laughs> that's, that's a really nice picture. And I really love the conference in Italy. It was organized in 2000 mm -hmm. by Simonetta Matucci. And mm -hmm. at the where we had the conference, Domus La Quercia was really fantastic. It was a yes, yes. monastery near Viterbo. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. it was a really big conference. And um, I really enjoyed the all the aspects of the conference that Simonetta organized so well. Yeah, no, that was that was amazing, really. Mm. And also, it, it was two thousand and seven, so it was a, a year the South Africans won the the Rugby World Cup, and we were there in Europe for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's another great memory from that conference. Yeah. You came as the winners of the Rugby World Cup. <laughs> oh no! And then just uh, the second photo, uh, mm -hmm. quick. Um, this was the last conference. Um, mm -hmm. in, in Valencia 2015, um, the big group photo, but what, what um, struck me afterwards, and again, it shows the, the, whole, the whole value of, of the meetings mm -hmm. and getting together, is that um, on this photo, I only discovered that a, a year or so later, is three um, um, PhD students, um, there's one of them, Alina Costa, and now I can't quickly see the other ones, but there's three PhD students that later in a year or two after this photo, they came to my lab and they did postdocs here in South Africa. And, um, and, and at that stage, we didn't even know each other. We didn't know we were on a photo together. Um, but then through the, through the conference and what, what came after that, we, we got in touch with one another and then they were able to come and do postdocs in South Africa. So, um, so yeah, so that's brilliant again. And one of the, the huge opportunities for a, for a meeting like this and, and, and like I said, that's why really, for me, that is uh, the, the star conference to go to um, um, whenever it happens. Mm. So that was the last FP meeting we both attended uh, in yes. Spain. And uh, Tonya Raga organized that conference. It was really, really fun. Mm. Like mm. I remember the mm. dinner, which was sort of under the aquarium. So fish oh, that... around. That was yeah. quite very yeah. nice, wasn't that... it? Yeah, and I always, um, I'm so Baron Suris, who did the keynote at the aquarium. Um, we, we're now doing a lot of really nice collaborative work with, and I always tell him that was, I was so jealous sitting there in the aquarium to see that background when you do the mm. keynote and there's like sharks mm. swimming behind him and all yeah, these yeah. fish. It's like the, the most in, incredible place yeah. to do the keynote. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was a really fantastic, I really enjoyed your presentation. Um, and no, no, so one you. of the biggest conferences, I think, out of ISFP, because yes. more than 300 students and scientists from mm, 54 mm. countries worldwide, and was very international conference. Mm, um, mm. Yeah, 
And between the one in Italy that you were just talking about and the one in Spain, obviously we had a conference in Chile with Marcelo Oliva organized and uh, yeah, yeah. also very successful, to, even though it was yes. so far away. We yeah. still had quite a lot of participants and people came from all over the world, mm, not mm, from mm. Uh, South America and Southern Hemisphere. So it was really nice. And, and I think that's a really big thing about ISFP. It's not a formal society or a formal mm. Mm. It's just like a really uh, enthusiastic people who want to meet yes, yes. science over some wine or beer and have some fun, uh, but talking science. And it's a really mm. Mm. nice crowd, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, no, it's it's just amazing. It's like, and every time, even if it's four years later or five years later, when we get together, it's mm. like meeting of old friends <laughs> mm, yeah yeah exactly yeah and it's, it's really quite sad we couldn't meet this year but it mm, mm. still published the uh, international journal of parasitology a uh, special issue on fish parasites and it's double issue because we had so many really amazing papers so what do you think about the cover um i <laughs> I, I chose oh, the team no. i would like just to thank J john brian for taking this and donating it to us oh no so so yeah no, so that that cover for me will always be special and as you know the summer thoughts they they are one of my my favorite research subjects and and the group that i've been working on since my phd so to have that on the cover and that stunning photo it is it is just amazing so oh, i love that <laughs> so, so oh, yeah, i was uh, personally spoiled to see that as the chosen yeah. for a photo <laughs> Yeah. So, so what did you think about the issue itself and not just the cover? Yeah, so, so that was, it was a great opportunity and, and I would like to, to, to thank you and, and Brian, the editor, and everyone involved for, with the issue and, and, and also the invitation that I received to, to be able to, to contribute to the issue. Um, um, if you look at if you look at the, the spread of the papers, it is, it is just it's just amazing. The, the, um, um, Robert Pollan, uh, the papers, the review papers that he was involved in with showing the value of, of fish parasites, uh, the biodiversity, um, mm. and, and the paper on, on, on you can't, um, ecologists shouldn't not ignore parasites. Mm. I, I love that paper. It is, it is mm. something that we've been talking about so yeah. much. Um, and, and then the, the, the research specific papers, what, what is great for, the, for, for me for that issue, it's like a, a one-stop a, a one shop for if you really would like to have a good examples of papers of the different um, taxa. So you have um, monogenians and um, you have mixosporians and diogenians and um, mm. you name it, um, everyone is, is present in cestodes mm. and, and then all the crustaceans. So it's present in that volume. So, mm. so for me, it's brilliant. And it's something that, that all mm. parasitologists and specific fish, specifically fish parasitologists should go to and mm. scroll through the, through the index, look at the table of context and, and mm. they will find papers that is of value to them in there. Yeah. So mm. congratulations. It's a yeah. stunning, stunning um, Thank issue. Thank you. And I hope everybody else feels the same. I, I was very proud of the papers people were submitting. It was really great work and a very widespread, as you said, not just the taxonomy of the parasites presented, but also mm. the tools like biodiversity and then treatment of some parasites and then ecology or epidemiology. So very different papers. And um, I, I really enjoyed all of them. And uh, some of the authors submitted too, like you, you have two papers published. <laughs> yeah. Like really so, great. <laughs> yeah, no, so I was very fortunate because I, I, um, um, I offered an option of one of two papers to, to Brian for the selection. And then he said, oh, mm -hmm. uh, why not both? And I was like, what? That is incredible <laughs> that, I, that, I, that I can. And then um, just after that, I, I got an email from my colleague, Lexa Kruter from the University of Queensland. And she said she's been invited and yeah. um, she, would, um, she would like to do a, a paper on, on work on naithids that we've been do, doing now for many years together. Mm -hmm. Um, with other collaborators and will I begin to do that and I was like yes three papers that <laughs> yeah, I'm exactly. involved with in, in this in this <laughs> issue so 
Yeah, for me, it's a great honor to, to be able to um, <laughs> be part of an issue and I've actually more than one paper yeah. that I'm involved I, in this issue. Well, yeah. so as I said, you submitted two, but you co-authored three and it's a really <laughs> piece of evidence showing the, how successful you are and how productive you are in the field of fish parasitology. And oh, thank you. I, I know you mostly from the point of view of um, an expert on uh, isopods. And one mm -hmm. of one of three papers, one of the three papers you co-authored is the one with Kerry Hatfield on a global distribution host of economically important fish parasitic isopod genus Ceratotora. Uh, and I, I find it really interesting because as I know, as you know, I had a PhD student who worked also mm -hmm. on Ceratotora yeah. and uh, anything on Ceratotora is exciting. So can you tell me more about the paper? So I've, I've, I've just put this together. You, you've mentioned the title. And, um, and the, the, the thing about the, the Karatasawa and especially um, this genus within the, within the family Simothoidae is it, it captures everyone's attention. Whether you, whether you uh, um, a person um, not interested in biology or whatever, it's just this whole effect mm. of a, of a fish and then there from mm. the mouth of the fish there's a little something mm. that uh, that mm. stares at you and it and it ranged from being amazed to some people going like oh this is not right <laughs> and um and and and, and, it, and it's just incredible and also the the size of them um they they range from uh, from one centimeter one and a half centimeters to to four or five centimeters. And then in this paper, we, we actually described the largest um, ever species that, um, um, that from this genus that has, has been recorded. Um, and we're very, we're very proud of this. Uh, this is the new species that we've described. These are the mm -hmm. other species. They, this is to scale. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and this, so this um, female. Wow, is the, that's a big one. <laughs> yeah, so that's about um, five and a half, six centimeters of a wow. parasite that lives in the mouth of another one, and then, <laughs> and then, um, uh, referring back to the name, is yeah. that when we looked at that, um, we we were busy with the paper, and again, it was a rugby World Cup year, and if you've now um, realized, and in South Africa we're crazy about our rugby, yeah, and um, and then the Springboks won the rugby World Cup. So ah. Kerry, <laughs> as in 2007, and uh, then Kerry and I decided, you know what, this this um, um, species is just so much bigger than any of its of its um, um, the other species in this whole group. So so we decided that we will name it Springbok. So its its official name or its scientific name is Karatathoa Springbok, um, mm -hmm. and it's named for the Springbok um, rugby winning team. Um, and the reason for that was because um, as the Springboks stood out in Japan um, um, and being the winners and the largest amongst their peers, um, this uh, Karatathoa is also the largest amongst its peers. So, so yeah, so we were very, very proud of, <laughs> <laughs> of being able to name it. Um, so, so it's great to know the history of the name. Is the yeah. <laughs> Big, like is the fish, uh, which is the host of the part of this isopod, a really big fish, or size, uh, or what's the reason that it's such a big parasite? Um, so, so they they grow with the fish, and it's more about the available space in the buccal cavity of, mm -hmm. of the fish. So, mm -hmm. um, so this is a, it's a sparrow. It's the host is a type mm -hmm. of of, of um, um, snapper type of fish. So they actually have a very big buccal cavity and very large. Um, area for the parasite to grow in. Um, so the fish itself don't grow that big. It's a, it's maybe um, 40, 50 centimeters, um, mm -hmm. but the space available for the parasite is, is quite huge. Mm -hmm. And then, okay. and then yeah. the, the size of the female relates to the number of offspring that she can produce. Mm -hmm. so, so she will produce a lot of offspring. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so uh, some ceratotora are highly host specific. Is this one host specific? Um, to date, we only found it in in one specific host. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So, so it seems like it seems like that. But in in South Africa specifically, mm -hmm. um, 
and then part of this paper we did a review of all the different hosts mm -hmm. it seems like sparrows are, are, are amongst the favorite group of of host of Gratithoa. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, another another interesting thing from our paper was we also looked at the global distribution of mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. and we and we look at the different um, um, realms that we find them in and and contrast to some of the other semethoids um, we found that they seem to be more diverse in temperate regions, mm -hmm. where most, most of the other semethoids are, are more diverse in tropical regions. Oh, now, okay. there's a, there's a lot, lot of um, thought about that. Is it, is it really a true uh, pattern or is it just lack of sampling? But, but in the paper, we did mm -hmm. compare it to similar groups which had similar um, type mm -hmm. of um, sampling and density. So, so at this stage, it, it seems as if, if for some reason they, they are more temperate um, species and they also their distribution is very much related to the distribution of the hosts and also the, the, global, um, mm -hmm. um, current, the global current patterns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's really interesting. <laughs> Do you think there's still a lot we can find about other new species of uh, Ceratotoa or do you think know most of them by now that's surprisingly and, and also because they're, they're such such um, large um, parasites we do f still find many new species mm -hmm. and especially from the undersampled regions we've got a really good collaboration going on with with colleagues in india um, mm -hmm. and there's there's so many um, species mm -hmm. that come from there and then also the type of fish house because a lot of the species to date was from your your big commercial um, spe mm -hmm. um, house species. Mm -hmm. So so if the moment, especially in in, in in coral reef systems, when you start to look at your smaller um, smaller um, house species, I think there's still a, a nice mm -hmm. big diversity there. Yeah, yeah. So still a lot to find. So lots of PhDs. Yes. Yes, definitely. <laughs> um, your, your second paper in the issue of IJP is about a uh, fish trypanosome. Um, obviously, yeah. a parasite, which is your favorite. <laughs> yes. So, um, so you you did mention in the in the beginning. I'll share this again. Um, Oops, no, I can't. Oh, there, I can go to the next slide. Um, you, you mentioned my interest is, is crustacean parasites and the blood mm -hmm. parasites. And, mm -hmm. and that can, kind of sounds strange when you say that is the main research interest. Mm -hmm. um, but how it, well, how it happened is I started off by working on, on crustaceans and specifically naked isopods, and mm -hmm. then from there moved to the simethoids. And then with um, 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 Angela Davies from um, the UK, we found that the nathids can actually transmit blood parasites. Mm -hmm. um, oh. and, they, and, and that's where my interest in blood parasites started. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and then you, the, the whole thing was said, okay, before we can um, define the transmission of blood parasites mm -hmm. by the nathids, we still need to sort out the diversity of blood parasites. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so then we, we, we got sidetracked and we worked on the diversity of blood parasites. Um, and actually, uh, a lot of that work was with, with together with Lexa Kruta um, on the mm -hmm. Great Barrier Reef, um, mm -hmm. which was an amazing, amazing place to work. Uh, my first visit there was during my postdoc, uh, my first mm -hmm. postdoc that I mm -hmm. did with Angela in the UK. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, so, so, and then it just, from there, it spread across the globe. Mm -hmm. And, but then, but then the Hugh McGregor answer that I was interested in um, um, didn't occur in, in freshwater fish. Mm -hmm. And and my my um, then supervisor Professor Jeff and us he had this stunning project in Okavango Delta, mm -hmm. and and I was just like oh I know my PhD is on marine parasites but I would really love to go to the Okavango Delta, mm -hmm. so I went to Prof Joe and I said you know what there's trypanosomes potentially in the in in freshwater yeah. fish. Um, can I please go with and I will do the blood and the blood <laughs> So, so he took me with and, uh, and then we, I also started to work on the trypanosomes and that was a really rewarding experience as well. And, and that introduced me to freshwater um, fish parasites as well as I'm originally from, from the marine environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, so, so this paper is really nice with colleagues mm -hmm. from, from the UK. Um, and South Africa and looking at the, um, also at the molecular um, um, 
side of things with the trypanosomes and also um, linking the leach vector molecularly mm -hmm. to the to the to the host and um, that has only been done for in the marine environment and it was mm -hmm. also a, a, a work that we did and now we were able in the in the freshwater environment to also show genetically mm -hmm. um, the, the link between between them um, and the, but the Japanese the fish Japanese terms is, is is quite interesting and, and currently in, South, in Africa it's considered mm -hmm. that every single fish freshwater fish trypanosome in Africa is the same species and, oh. and that that um, I never could get my head around that is how mm -hmm. can how can all the the huge variety of fish infected mm -hmm. um, in Africa and you know Africa has mm -hmm. got amazing uh, diversity of freshwater fish have mm -hmm. the same species of trypanosomes so this is part of our larger project mm -hmm. where we start to, to figure out using genetics um, mm -hmm. um, that it's actually a much bigger diversity than mm. you know, what, what we thought. Um, and then, pardon? Yeah. No, you go ahead. <laughs> That's just, then just the last thing I want to mention. One, one of the mm -hmm. things about trypanosomes that always um, amazes me is that um, when we see trypanosomes and show students, it's all these nice stained um, mm -hmm. sta stages. So, so it, it tends to become, it is a dead, a dead, dead animal, dead protozoan on a slide. Mm -hmm. um, so this, this is actually this video that we last week we were fortunate to be on a on a field trip, so I was able to take this video. Mm -hmm. And and for for me that is just so nice to see that Japanese are <laughs> actually alive <laughs> and, <laughs> and see how they move around. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can see it between the blood cells. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So one yeah. Japanese, like a little. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. It's really active, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's so really nice to see the live parasite and not just a fixed mm. specimen on a, on a slide. Mm. <laughs> so, so morphologically, they're quite similar, and it's only that mo uh, molecular analysis can distinguish different uh, species. Do you think? In yes. Yes, definitely. So, mm -hmm. so un unfortunately, what happened was that all the all the trypanosomes that was described in the beginning was only mm -hmm. it was it was morphometrics. So, mm -hmm. and then and then there's an overlap in morphometrics. So mm -hmm. every time the next person described a species, they said, "Okay, there's a mm -hmm. slight overlap. So, so it must be the same, or or, or it's maybe different." And then mm -hmm. and then at the end, you end up with morphometrics, which is the range is so mm -hmm. big that you can actually fit everything in that yeah, um, yeah. and <laughs> so and, and that is that is the stage where we where we got mm -hmm. so that's why the the um the molecular work is really nice and it shows mm -hmm. the different lineages um the specific one in this paper is is from the catfish mm -hmm. um, um, related um, species of fish um and the one that we're currently working on is from cichlids um, mm -hmm. And genetically, it's clear that the cichlid one and the catfish one is, is different species. Mm -hmm. And the one you just showed as live one in the video, that's from the cichlid or from catfish or from something else? What fish um, is so, from? So, so this, is, this is actually from something else. Else, Our trip um, last week was a marine trip. So we went to the oh, coast. Oh, okay. Uh, that's marine and, trip. And, yeah. Yeah, and this is from the mullet. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're very yeah. lucky that you can do so many field trips during COVID. Because so, in yeah. a lot of countries, field trips <laughs> are still limited. And you, yeah. every time I email you on a different field trip. <laughs> no, we're very fortunate. We actually, we only um, become um, able to do field trips at the start of October. Um, mm -hmm. when South Africa went to lockdown level one. So, mm -hmm. um, um, so then we immediately we were waiting for this just mm -hmm. to get into the field. So yeah, yeah. so since since October we've been making sure mm -hmm. that we get into mm -hmm. get into the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. And yeah. you also published a, a paper in the special issue with Lexa. You said so. What was that paper about? Can you tell us more about? Um, Yes, so, so there's this one. So this is a practical methods for culturing parasitic naphid isopods. Um, mm -hmm. So, so I, um, I mentioned that was the, um, the, the place where my, my career actually started as a student was working with naphid isopods. Mm -hmm. and, um, 
and then and then my what I started to do was to do the taxonomy and and sorting them out. And one of the one of the big challenges with naithids is that mm -hmm. the larval stage, these these um, mm -hmm. pretty guys here, they the paras parasites of fish. Um, mm -hmm. But the ta taxonomy is not based mm -hmm. on the larval form. The taxonomy is based on the adults um, and, and just mm -hmm. the male the males. But mm -hmm. they are free living. So, so part of the life cycle is that the the nathan, the larvae will go and feed on the fish, drop off, feed again, drop off, and then the third time when it drops off the fish, um, it will actually then molt into the adults. And the adults are benthic, and they they hide away in coral rubble and anywhere that they in sponges, wherever they can find, they they hide there mm -hmm. away. So, so, so um, legs are. That um, as you noted, all this amazing work and still do on cleaner fish and cleaner interaction. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and she and she found that the 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 um, parasite that the cleaners eat the most is actually naked larvae. And mm -hmm. she she had a short um, a, a note a, a nature about that mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was an amazing number of naked that gets eaten daily by the cleaners um, but so she collected all these larvae but um, she couldn't identify them and that's how then how she contacted me back in in 2000 early 2000s and that's how our collaboration started so so I came out to Australia and um, then with uh, we, we took the naithids and we, we bred because that was part of my PhD doing the life cycle breeding the naithids through into mm -hmm. adults um, mm -hmm. and then and then identifying them Mm -hmm. So in the process, in the process, we described that way about five or six naithids from the Z Island, new ones, mm -hmm. um, throughout the time. But then also, what what Lexa was really great at was establishing this culture um, mm -hmm. of naith of naithids um, on Lizard Island, um, mm -hmm. and keeping keeping this culture alive for for many years. And then and then I was able to use that culture to actually do transmission experiments to show that the naithids in coral reef also transmit blood parasites and we parasites and we had a PhD student Linda Curtis um, working on that. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so there's always about this culture and the value mm -hmm. of the culture. Mm -hmm. And then our, our, our colleague uh, Paul Sickle um, also do um, um, behavior, fish behavior work in, in, in the States. Um, he also worked with with um, Lexa, and then he set up a culture in the Caribbean. So I was fortunate to mm -hmm. go to the Caribbean and and work oh, wow. with Paul, <laughs> work work with Paul there as well on on setting up that um, that culture. And then, mm -hmm. as you know, um, Kate Hudson also with the work that she did at mm -hmm. JCU was involved in setting up cultures of of parasites for these experimental work. So, so we all had different experiences, and then I also um, in South Africa and, and Potchefstroom um, is about eight hundred kilometers from the coast. Mm -hmm. So we're very, very fortunate that we can still do marine work in Potchefstroom because we can mm -hmm. travel to the coast. But we also have an amazing um, research aquarium facility at our university, um, mm -hmm. and in it, we've in it we've got running seawater. Um, mm -hmm. So we have marine tanks and marine fish. So mm -hmm. we've also um, set up a, a culture in artificial seawater. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so, so yeah, so this paper is actually a, um, a how-to guide and, and background mm -hmm. information on, on how to do it from the different experience, from the, the, um, all the brilliant experience Lexa had at Lizard Island and Kate's experience mm -hmm. with the and colors um, um, cultures and then mm -hmm. all the other people that participated in the, and then my experience um, with the, in setting mm -hmm. it up in the artificial and then Paul mm -hmm. in, the, in, in the Caribbean. So yeah, mm -hmm. so it is, it is, I love this paper and the fact that we can actually mm -hmm. bring something that we've been doing for 10, 15 years together mm -hmm. and, then sh and then show the research community the value of actually having a culture and then what you can do mm -hmm. with it. it, it, it mm -hmm. It's just am amazing what you can do the moment when you have a viable parasite culture mm -hmm. and then really in-depth um, studies um, using mm -hmm. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and it, it really also shows international collaboration and networking because obviously the authors of, in this paper are from many different countries and yes, it is. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, so uh, going back to uh, international collaborations and networking, uh, at the if we were uh, at the conference this year, you were going to organize a workshop 
uh, Horizon workshop. So can you tell us more about the workshop that you were hoping to organize this year? Yeah, yeah. So, so the, the Horizon scanning concept um, is a, it's a really well established uh, method to actually find out what is the different burning research questions in a specific field. Um, and this has been successfully applied to specifically conservation and um, conservation management. Um, and then also recently the um, uh, Society for Environmental Toxicology and Chemistry, they did horizon scanning of, in the different continents about what is the burning issues in environmental toxicology. Um, so yeah, so, so being part of, of that as well, um, it gave me the idea that we really need something like that for fish parasites because mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's burning issues and in, in our own different environments, we're dealing with it. But um, if we can actually have a, have a global view at it, it will, it will help us a lot. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the concept with the horizon scanning is that we first um, request everyone, anyone, whether they're in, in industry, in academia, and um, to actually submit questions. Um, mm -hmm. And then, and so it's a research question, um, and there's a specific criteria to the question. So you can't answer the question with yes or no, because mm -hmm. <laughs> it must be a proper framed research question. Mm -hmm. And then, and then also it's a large question that in order to resolve it, you need um, we look at uh, a million US dollars or something mm -hmm. or 500,000 US dollars to mm -hmm. resolve it. You need a larger team to resolve it. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then the idea is everyone will submit as many questions as possible. And then that questions will then be put into different groupings um, and related maybe questions related mm -hmm. to aquaculture, questions mm -hmm. related to parasite ecology, questions related to... to um, diseases that that type of thing so it will be grouped depending on the questions and then the workshop the workshop mm -hmm. specifically will then be um all the all all the interesting parties that will uh, be at a conference or, or um, uh, mm -hmm. fish parastologists that they will get together in the workshop and then work through those questions so um so they will be divided into groups and you will get a grouping of questions and then look at those questions and see which of them is kind of the same so they can be merged which of them actually deals with two different topics and can be split mm -hmm. and then write on each of those um, questions mm -hmm. um, a, a way forward on how to address uh, how to address mm -hmm. this, um, those issues and then the end, produ end product will then be from the workshop will be then a horizon scanning paper um, mm -hmm. with, with all the workshop attendees will, will um, have inputs into that um, and then and then publish that um, and to, to show that, okay, this is the burning questions, the burning research needs um, for this, for um, say this next um, period forward, mm -hmm. uh, maybe 2021 to 2020, um, 2025 or something like that for when I'll be at our next conference. Um, and then that is something that people can take, look at those questions, see who's involved in those areas, what fits with you. And also mm -hmm. a very good, a, a very good, um, um, a type of paper to use for funding um, mm -hmm. when applying mm -hmm. for funding to say, but listen, this is a scientific discovery of research needs. Um, so, so there's a good motivation why we should do this, this type of work. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so in, in a nutshell, that's the horizon mm -hmm. scanning for, for fish parasites. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it sounds really amazing and a huge idea and it will be really important for fish parasites. Um, but obviously we couldn't do it this year because yeah, the yeah. conference has been postponed. So do you have a way forward for the workshop? Like, Have you started to get the questions yet? Or do you think you have to wait until you know when the workshop is going yeah. to be the plan? So, so, yeah, so, so um, originally when, when we knew that the, the um, conference is going to move forward, um, I've decided that I will that we will just give it a little bit of time before moving forward with the workshop or the mm -hmm. questions. Um, but I but I think at this stage, um, the best will be and and my plan is to um, um, towards the end of November to really so the website and everything mm -hmm. where this where the questions can be submitted is already set up, um, mm -hmm. and then to distribute the information throughout the throughout our fish parasite mm -hmm. community. Um, mm -hmm. that they can start to submit questions and mm -hmm. then we can then we can take questions until uh, march 
um, mm -hmm. um, next year and then have a look at the questions, put them in their groupings. And by, by then we will have a clear idea of, of the way forward for next year. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then make a decision about that. I've seen that, for example, um, Bill Sutherland is from Cambridge University, do a lot of the horizon scanning work and, and actually led that um, originally. Um, and they do horizon scanning for conservation biology every year. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, and I've seen him now do it virtually with, with virtual mm -hmm. workshops. Mm -hmm. So, so, um, so I think what, what we will do is that it doesn't matter what, what the, the final outcome is of, of next year and, mm -hmm. and whether we have vaccines and can travel around, um, we mm -hmm. will go ahead with the workshop um, mm -hmm. either at, the, at, the, at the conference um, or um, otherwise we do virtual workshops mm -hmm. and, then, and then the moment when we can get together, we will still workshop through the, the mm -hmm. concepts mm -hmm. and the ideas, yeah. Yeah, that, that sounds fantastic. Mm -hmm. So start virtually and hopefully we'll at least end up uh, together as a group of uh, yes. fish parasitologists. Yes. Um, <laughs> So, so I'm also really looking forward to the conference. I hope it will be next year, but um, fingers crossed. And if not, hopefully soon after, and hopefully I'll be able to see everybody in Cairns, including you. And uh -huh. I think you're planning to go on field trips when you come to Australia. Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> Australia is for us like a second home for me. I've been, I've been working with, with Lexa and then with Neil Bruce. Mm -hmm. um, at the, the Queensland Museum now since since the two thousands and um, yeah and I'm missing my trips to to Australia and and going out to the Great Barrier Reef and also um the past three four years we had really nice projects with Tom Cripp um, mm -hmm. going with him, mm -hmm. going with him to to Erin Island and to Stratford mm -hmm. Island so so yeah I'm I'm really missing those <laughs> <laughs> and, and and looking looking forward for the opportunity to to start to travel again and collaborate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so we are really looking forward to contributing to the Horizon workshops, either virtual or face to face. Mm -hmm. And I also hope that we'll meet at a ISFP sooner than later, one face to face ISFP in Cairns, uh, hopefully next year, and if not soon after. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Me too. thank you very much, <laughs> Nico. It was a really nice yeah. talking to you. Thanks a lot. I yeah. really appreciate your time. Uh, thank you very much for the invite. Okay. Bye bye.